Okay, um, the third item on the agenda is discussion of ordinance number 32562, allowing the permit of vehicles that are unloading music equipment for scheduled performances to utilize loading zones. Um, I'd like to at first call um, Hannah Krieger Benson to the table as well as Jen Cecil while I'm making a few comments. This came to our attention um, in that a lot of our musicians have been receiving tickets while they're loading and offloading into clubs. Um, as we all know, the cultural economy is a major attraction for the city, um, but we often do not treat them well, and nor are they compensated appropriately. It's also, um, I think, insulting to get a ticket that is almost as much as your gig when you have to um, for an entire night of playing. So we are um, trying to find a solution to this. We have um, put forth and drafted an ordinance. Um, we've not introduced it yet. We want to get some public opinion before we do so. So um, Hannah is here from MACNO, and I'd like you, you both to kind of introduce yourselves. And Hannah, I'd like, I'd like you to talk, first I'd like Jen to talk a little bit about what this looks like and what they've done. And then um, Hannah, if you wouldn't mind adding some, some comments and, and we'll go from there. So Jen from Safety and Permits, would you like to talk a little bit about what we're trying to do here? Sure. My name's Jen Cecil. I'm the director of the One Stop for Permits and Licenses, and um, the council member and the council uh, research office brought to us a proposal regarding parking for musicians, um, unloading and loading temporarily in front of venues or on the same block as a venue because oftentimes their equipment is too large to be able to walk for several blocks when you think about a crowded area uh, such as Frenchman Street. Uh, the way that after discussing it with council research we decided to approach it was from the standpoint of venues that are licensed for live entertainment because that would present a couple of opportunities for us and it would keep us from becoming involved in determining what constituted music or regulating any individual musician regarding their expression. Um, so since we do license venues for live entertainment, the approach taken to this ordinance was that we would extend two permits to every venue that has a live entertainment license, hopefully then helping us incentivize anybody who might be eligible or grandfathered in for live entertainment to formalize that and get the appropriate license and uh, thereby keeping us out of any sort of freedom of expression concerns and keeping it in a direct relationship. The plan that uh, was discussed also included only a 15 minute unloading time for the loading and unloading of the equipment. Um, I'm sure that that's still somewhat flexible, but we've been working with DPW as we're refining this to figure out what's going to work for them as far as being able to recognize this placard, respond immediately, and make sure that when we are or when we do begin using it that everyone is trained so that those tickets do stop happening. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to turn over comments to, to Hannah and then to open it up to any of the council members. Um, council members, also in front of you, you have this sheet, which was put together by Magno. They've been gathering um, information and comments from musicians from across the city. Um, and I just want to thank you for your advocacy. It makes it a lot easier to, for us and to convey information to us to understand what's important and what's not important. Um, so again, Hannah, I'll just turn it over to you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Hannah Krieger Benson. I do programming and research um, with Music and Culture Coalition of New Orleans. Um, thank you for your attention to this matter. W one of the main categories of response that I've been getting is just community um, gratitude that governmental resources and time are being put towards something that you know to try to make musicians' lives better. So that is uh, that's the first thing. Um, I do want to thank Andrew Sullivan, especially, um, for taking the time to meet with me a couple of times in the last few weeks. Um, like you said, the document that you've got um, is just a quick assembly of all of the, the commentary that we've gotten. And I color-coded it by type. Um, full disclosure, I left 
the wording as is. There's a little bit of salty language, nothing vulgar, but um, a couple of the comments are a little bit. I actually like the salty language. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> it's very, it's very, uh, very real. Um, but I wanted to just sort of summarize um, sort of the different, the different categories of responses and what they, what I think they illustrate. The biggest thing, and this is something that Andrew and I have talked about, is the need for a map of loading zones. So we've requested from the administration a map of all the loading zones. Yep. So as soon as we get that, we will convey that to you so you can also disseminate that information. Awesome. Um, and, and the big thing with that is that that is one way to cut through um, one particular sort of category of responses to this, which is it's well-meaning but not actually relevant. Um, and that is until there's a clear sense of how loading zones are, are, exist in proximity to music venues, there are many, many cases in which this is not um, sort of relevant to the reality on the ground. So that, the, the first thing there is, is, the, is the mapping of that. Um, it can also, of course, highlight potential trouble spots, although anecdotally those are pretty clear. Um, so I'm going to just sort of go over the different categories of commentary and sort of explain... Um, what, what I think the patterns that they're starting to show. So again, the first one, which is the ones in green, are the ones that are just straight up supportive. Um, and there are, there are a number of those. There really is a lot of excitement about this. Um, the comments in red um, are the ones that show the current problems. And this is um, what Council Member Palmer mentioned, this idea of, you know, you play a gig, you make 52 bucks, you get a loading, or you get a ticket. Um, in, the, in this particular instance that I'm, that I'm thinking of, um, the musicians, the musician, she was, she was actively, she was carrying her gear, she was carrying um, something quite large, I think, and her wife was in the car in the loading zone. You know, it was, it was sort of this active loading, and she got a $40 ticket, having made $52 at her gig, and that, you know, that's the one to me that just sort of really stuck out. Um, and again, that one was on Frenchman Street, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, and there's a number of other responses around tickets while actively loading. You know, there's one about, um, actually the car I think got, was getting towed. The person had gone inside, you know, flashers on, gone inside, grabbed their keyboard and, you know, you move, you move as quickly as you can, but the, sh the schlep is very real. Um, and it's, you know, sort of a built-in, it's a structural part of being a musician or being a, a visual artist in some cases, that there's kind of a built-in schlep. And that's not true in a lot of other jobs. Um, and you can only sort of move as quickly as as you can, um, given the, the gear that you're carrying. Um, so the next category, and this was very wide ranging and, and very, very um, numerous. I think I put them. I put them in blue, and these are just sort of talking about different ways to expand this issue and to expand the research around it. Um, and again, the idea here is let's make this ordinance the best that it can be, because an, an ordinance that is well intentioned um, but not actually helpful unfortunately doesn't do a lot of good. I and mean, that seems to be where this is sitting right now, given the disconnect between the reality that the musicians face. Um, so the ones in blue, um, one thing that they talk about again are where are the loading zones? And there's a number of comments actually about loading zones that are not actually city sanctioned, but have been um, you know, marked by, by businesses in different ways. And again, this is, that sort of gets down a, a deep rabbit hole that is, um, well, one, far beyond my expertise and, and, you know, something that needs to be sort of carefully looked at. Um, one thing that did come up, of course, is making sure that it would apply to artists and other practitioners, which I think is really interesting because, again, there are other um, jobs in the cultural economy that do involve, you know, the, the moving of, of stuff in that way and the use of loading zones. Um, and then... The other category in the blue in the blue comments are about the expansion to parking. So a lot of people sort of immediately conflated loading and parking and began talking about any number of things, including longer parking zone time, so you don't you're not trying to run in and out in the middle of a gig, partnering with Park Mobile, um, having a designated lot for musicians with a shuttle, which is something that obviously has come up in various other contexts as well. Um, and the last category, which is probably the biggest in terms of repetitive specific comments, and I understand that this is directly um, counter to, to the safety and permits sort of initial thought is the idea of tying it to specific vehicles. And that honestly was the most common response, was that musicians, and, and the underlying reason um, was the following, that, again, while it is well-intentioned, if I pull up into a loading zone, get out, go inside, f have to find someone on staff who knows where this pass is, 
Um, one, that's one more thing for the bar staff to keep track of. Um, these are you know, people who um, keep track of more things on a daily basis than I, I think I ever could. Um, and that's assuming that you know, the night manager knows where the day manager put it, et cetera, et cetera. By the time I come back out to my car with said pass, I may have already gotten a ticket given the, uh, the quick response to the, the um, forgive me, what is the correct term for the people who give the tickets? What's the technical term? PCOs, okay. Given the, the, the quickness of the PCOs, um, by the time I've gone in and gotten the pass and come back out, um, I may have already gotten a ticket. And in that time, I probably could have just thrown my gear into the, into the venue and gone to park and then you know, doing the same thing again in reverse at the end of the night. So there's a pretty strong sense that having physical passes tied to the clubs will only work a, some some of the time and it and the the busier or the denser of a cultural ecosystem so you know we're talking about Frenchmen of the quarter or what have you it, the less and less it'll work um, and and then of course the fact that they will just get lost um, they will get they'll get um, they'll sort of disappear out into the into the world, and obviously venues can you know print new ones, and and you know Jen with her laminating machine can laminate more. Um, but in terms of making it the most effective and efficient and streamlined, it doesn't seem like that's quite the right thing. So there, one thing that had come up is the idea of email um, and coming from the venue either to the band leader or you know distributed in some other way. So having it again tied to the venue, but distributed electronically to be printed before the gig. That's one thing that had come up. Um, that actually leads into, um, I was going to talk about just sort of some general ideas about solutions. Um, and the, the one thing is that um, if a musician or musician and artist focus group would be useful, MACNO has already offered to sort of help make that happen. So we can definitely do that, which is one of the reasons why we had asked that this not be um, moved forward today was so that we'd have the time to do that. So that's something that I'm going to start working on. Um, another big chunk of it, again, is is sort of researching around any type of something that's going to be tied to individual musicians or vehicles, and I understand that that is, you know, a um, potentially very fraught idea, but that is, that is sort of the community response at large seems to be um, that that's what is, that's what is wanted. Um, the other thing, another piece of it is training, training-based solutions, um, I guess, talking to the PCOs um, and figuring out if there's some ways that in certain places, at least, maybe some of the densest cultural ecosystems, there could be a grace period, there could be, you know, it, it's very difficult to sort of regulate it legally, you know, without sort of getting into a ridiculous rabbit hole where you're trying to, you know, give PCOs a, a you know, a, a visual guide to this is what all the different types of music gear look like, you know, we're not trying to sort of um, get that, that granular, but if there could be some way of, uh, I think there may be some training-based um, or, or procedure-based stuff that could be very, very useful. Um, the one other thing that came up a number of times, and I don't think I put it as a separate color, but I believe it was at least, last time I counted it was six, and I think now maybe several more, is people, and this is now talking specifically about Frenchmen, which is definitely a special case. Um, actually, I'm going to back up and talk about Frenchmen for a second. Um, a couple of things that make Frenchmen special. One, the density, of course. Two, the fact that you have music starting earlier in the day than many places. You have music starting at two or at four. Many loading zones go till six. Um, if you work in a place like that, you begin to you learn the rhythms of it. You know where to look for parking or loading. You kind of have your, your strategies. Um, but if it's you know if it's before six o'clock, there's a whole different a whole different sort of approach to it. So that's one thing that makes Frenchmen very different. Um, and so it may be worth implementing this in the entire city and then doing some more deep dive on Frenchmen or the quarter or what have you. Um, but specifically regarding Frenchmen, the idea of not having um, uh, Lyft and Uber come down the street. Yeah, I was struck by the comments and the number of musicians talking about how Lyft and Uber really clog the streets and take up the loading zones. And, I, and that, I think there's a whole other issue that we need to start talking about citywide, especially within the, in the quarter. We know the same thing is happening yeah. everywhere and creates another level of confusion. Yeah. Um, that is pretty much the extent of, of my sort of initial comments, and I would be happy to answer questions to clarify. Well, thank you so much. This, is, this has been incredibly helpful. We Good. really, really appreciate it. Um, Councilmember Williams. Um, I, I, 
want to just sort of, um, I guess, linger on that one congestion issue. I was not surprised to see the comments about Uber and, and Lyft, um, because frankly, all across the city, yeah. you can see traffic coming to a standstill and only to find out that someone is loading up suitcases or getting out in the middle of the street, literally in the middle of the street. And I, and I'm, Hundred uh, percent understand the beauty of the shared economy, but cab drivers and shuttles—they know the rules. They're trained professionals, and they're not in town from Hancock, Mississippi, trying to figure out uh, where Burgundy is. They saw Burgundy, but they don't see Burgundy, right? And um, and so I can, and, and having lived in the quarter, I, I, you can literally make a five-minute drive, thirty minutes, because of two uber lift pickups and so i think we need to start having i mean the musicians i'm sure they 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 live and breathe it uh but i think we need to start having a conversation maybe even have uh uber and lyft come in and have a conversation with them uh on a corporate level about um proper training and understanding that uh drivers need to follow all of the rules that cab drivers follow in terms of where they pick people up. i mean it's not an inconvenience to go 10 more feet to park the car rather than uh letting people get in and get out in the middle of the street it's also a hazard uh, if there's a bike coming down because you're going to open the door into the bike lane so uh having untrained drivers picking up people for money is something that I think we need to have a, a really longer conversation on. Um, maybe even to the point that they aren't allowed in certain congested areas, but they could maybe just go to uh, Canal Street or Esplanade or some boundaries uh, just to free up that congestion in the quarter, which might address a number of these things. I'd love to know what you think about that. Yeah, I, th- I think that that is... I think it's striking the, the the similarity of repeated comments exactly around that. Say, yeah. you know, and and I think most of those were around Frenchmen. Um, some of I've been doing research on the cultural economy of Frenchmen. So some of the folks that these comments came from were people who I was specifically talking to about Frenchmen. But some of them were just generally solicited comments, and even then, they often were talking about Frenchmen of the quarter. Um, so I, I think there's a pretty strong pattern there, um, and the idea of you know Lyft or Uber not being allowed down the street, um, you know, having a, a drop-off zone somewhere else, you know, it it kind of comes back to, you know, what I was calling the the schlep, because, you know, if you if you work in the service industry and you don't have sort of associated um, gear or stuff, it may be an inconvenience, and, you know, maybe you're getting dropped off, but if, you, if you've got music gear, even if you're getting dropped off, and now you're two and a half blocks away instead of half a block away, that can be, you know, massively inconvenient, or it can. You know, lead yeah, but I think you could you can problem. easily make do with that if they if, if they're being dropped off in front of a gig. You know what I'm saying? Well, but, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can't get to the gig because right. of the congestion, and now you're being dropped off two blocks away instead of right out front. It makes a huge difference, and you know, then there's chronic health problems from you know dragging things around, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So I think that that is. I, I think that larger conversation opens up, and I think that also sort of reflects how this seemingly very sort of small, specific, and very welcome um, proposal sort of opens up these large issues. areas and different... No, it's areas. great. It, it shines a light on it. And Councilmember Williams, I think, is, is dead on it. A lot of cities that have um, entertainment districts and historic centers, uh, Uber and Lyft have to pick up on the outside of them, and it really prom- helps promote it um, and, and protects everybody, quite frankly, within and, these areas. And it starts a larger conversation about, you know, just how many cars we need on the street, want on the street. A lot of uh, cities internationally, you know, there's just no cars in certain areas. Yeah, and they're pedestrianizing the entire downtown area. So it might be a sort of a way to look at that on a gradual level. So we start thinking about it and realize, oh, you know what, five block walk, that that what, that didn't kill me, you know. Right. Um also, with regards to, um, did you, could you reach a consensus? Because it seems like there's some folks who think the passes could cause an extra problem, and some people think the passes is the only way to go, whether it's stuck on a car. I'm reading these, I frankly was, I always assumed that a loading zone would be a loading zone, whether you were pulling out uh, 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 
boxes of beer or Coke or tubas and drums. I, I just assumed that a meter maid would see someone with a drum set and that would, and would, be, would treat them the same way as if they had a, uh, a, a, a gurney full of Pepsi. Um, so I'm shocked that that's not the case, and I think we, uh, we certainly um, need to uh, have at least the protections we have on vendors for our musicians because that's why people are down there drinking Pepsi and Coke in the first place. That's very true. I mean, and, and, this, um, and please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding was that the way loading zones currently work um, has to do with company sort of company-branded vehicles and, and sort of official... They, they have special commercial license plates. Commercial license plates, yeah. Right, which we don't want to obviously put the musicians on that. I think it's the higher cost. It could be a more of a burden. Is that yeah. correct, Jen? Yes, Council Member, it is. Thank you. I mean, if you guys can, like, reach a consensus on whether or not it's a sticker or a tag or, or, or whether it's that, permanent... Sure. And, ...and hopefully whatever it is, it can be done online so they don't have to come here because it takes forever to get anything done here, you know? <laughs> Well, that, that's where the, the sort of the focus group idea comes is this is kind of the initial presentation of right. the, the breadth of community response, and then the focus group would hopefully be able to come to a point of, of agreement. But that all is contingent on the idea of pursuing the, the, the whole concept of individual-based passes anyway, which it sounds like is not necessarily um, what the, uh, the city wants to, you know, thinks is realistic. Um, in terms of the actual format of it, I think that could certainly be hammered out um, without, you know, in a pretty straight, it might take a little bit of time, um, but that's, that's, you know, the kind of thing that we want to be putting our time into for sure. Thank you. Yeah. This is great work. Thank you. Councilmember Member Russo. Thank you. I just want to follow up with what Councilmember Williams said, of course, as usual. It's a lot of the same ideas, but I think we do need to have this holistic conversation with the TNCs. Um, for a reason you mentioned, certainly we've had this conversation with the bicycles and, you know, when we had the meeting last week, there was so much conversation about parking in the lanes and kind of getting some commitment from them. But I uh, leaned over to Council Member Palmer because we have Jazz Fest coming up and there's geofencing that's set up around Jazz Fest, right, because it's such a big event and there's so many people and we want to make sure that people can get to where they need to be, but there's not too much congestion as well. And so thinking about that, we, have, we, we sort of are piloting it already, so to conceptually do that on different levels. And then, you know, as we also have major construction projects going on too, I mean, look at Convention Center right now, Boulevard, as a perfect place. I mean, there, there are a lot of people who pass through there, and we are, we've really made those roads more narrow. And, you know, the more traffic that we generate, not really from, from locals necessarily, but really from the TNCs, that we can find better ways to get people to and from and take a burden off of people, I think would be pretty welcome by everybody. So thank you for bringing this to our attention. It would have been something, I think, intuitively that you would have thought of, but it, it, it makes a lot of sense, particularly for people who's, as you said, their sole job is, is to get to some place and take all this equipment with them while they're going to their, to their gig. Thank you. Great. Thank you, council members. Any other comments? No? And we don't have any public comment cards. I think, Hannah, you took care of that from the musician side, so thank you very much. Um, and just as a follow-up, I think it would be great to have a focus group, and if Jen, if y'all, if safety and permits would be amenable to meeting with them and... Absolutely. Um, actually, your staff connected us uh, last week, and so we're following up Rocking tomorrow. Uh, or, yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. We're following up tomorrow to sort of bang out some of the feedback that she's gotten and see what solutions we can reach without uh, adding too much additional work or time to any particular group to make this effective. Great. Well, thank you both so much. We appreciate your work on this.